Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about our sun evolving into a red giant and our solar system evolving with it. Have you ever wondered where exactly we'll be able to live when our sun becomes too big? Let's find out using Universe Sandbox Square and welcome to What The Math. So in some of the previous videos, we actually simulated our sun becoming a very, very large red giant. Basically what would happen to our sun in about four and a half billion years from now. It's going to become so large that it's almost going to come to the edge of the orbit of planet Earth. And it's going to absorb these two planets, Mercury and Venus. This is what we think about uh, the evolution of stars like our sun. And we think that our sun will definitely go through similar steps as well. Now, I've also talked about the potential habitable places in our solar system in a video that I made about a year and a half ago, but today I actually wanted to explore other objects. I actually wanted to see what other objects in our solar system will become habitable when our sun becomes super, super, super big. And it's going to stay that big for about a billion years. So maybe, just maybe, we might as well start claiming or staking a new home for ourselves. So how do we do this? Well, we're going to go in here. I'm going to... Uh, select the fixed mass for our uh, our sun and start making it larger. First of all, let's make it grow about 10 times larger and then basically just increase its size manually just so you can see how it starts growing. Now, as it grows, its density is going to start decreasing, its temperature is going to also start decreasing and it's going to start becoming like a big uh, fire blob, not even not even a solar object anymore, just a blob, a cloud of fiery atoms, which is essentially what a red giant is. It's not you wouldn't really call it a star star, even though it is a star. It's more of a just a blob of energy with a very central, very dense core in the middle. Now the core here we don't really see, but we see the blob itself, and actually that blob just swallowed Mercury, which was something that we think will happen to Mercury at some point. Venus is next on the list, and we think that it's also going to be swallowed as well. And we think that our Sun is going to be almost 140 million kilometers in radius, which is basically the edge of the orbit of Earth. So Earth right now, if you look at it, is not particularly hospitable. It's become a relatively hot place to live on if you can't live there at all. It's basically a, a big lava bowl. The temperature here, if you're wondering, is about 1800 degrees Celsius. Um, so right, so that's clearly not a place we'll be able to survive on. Where can we possibly find a new home? So we're going to zoom out of here. And I can tell you right now, we can probably cross out Mars from the equation as well, because it's also going to be relatively hot. Uh, and Mars is somewhere right there. Let's go a little bit further. Let's actually add the moons to all of these objects. We're going to go into each of them and add their moons. And we're going to take a look at the moons of the other planets, basically. We're going to take a look at moons of Uranus and Saturn and Jupiter and Neptune. And using a, an approach that's basically just looking at the planets after they warm up or cool down, we're going to discover if there is actually any place that is going to be habitable for us and is going to be nice and comfy. So maybe this would be our next home for about a billion years while the sun stays that big. Starting with Jupiter. So first of all, let's look at Jupiter itself. And as you can see, Jupiter is also a bit on the fiery side. The temperature here is about 500 degrees Celsius, which also means that all of the moons of Jupiter, including, of course, the, the ones we think would be habitable, are also a little bit hot. But because uh, some of them don't have any atmosphere, they might not be as hot as Jupiter itself. So here, for example, the effective temperature of uh, Europa is 400 degrees Celsius, but I guess because it's it's, you know, there's no atmosphere and because it has a dark side and also the bright side, the average temperature is about minus 40 degrees, which is a bit unusual. I'm not sure if it's a bug or not. If you look at Io on the other hand, it's about 500 degrees Celsius. Ganymede is also about 500. 
and Callisto is approximately 600 degrees Celsius. So all of the other moons seem to be super hot. So I think Europa must be just bugged or something. So I think pretty much everything in the system of Jupiter is going to be out of the question. So let's just erase them so they don't have to concern us anymore. All right, so what else do we have? We have um, Saturn. Let's go to Saturn and let's find out if the moon that we have so many hopes for, known as Titan, is by some unknown chance habitable. And if we go here and we zoom into Titan, we'll see that the average temperature on Titan right now is about 360 degrees Celsius, which is just a little bit cooler than Venus. Uh, that's a little bit too high for us. So looks like pretty much everything in the Saturn system is also going to be out of the question because, well, mostly because Saturn is still a little bit too close for comfort and the temperature in Saturn is 300 degrees Celsius. That's, that's a little bit toasty. All right, so Saturn is also out of the question. And the next on the list is going to be um, Uranus. Now, unfortunately, Uranus doesn't really have any particular moons that might be big enough and interesting enough for us to cool habitable. And also because we don't really know enough about it. We've only been here once with the Voyager probe. But if you look at each and every one of those moons, you'll see that even here the temperature is like 140 degrees Celsius. Uh, some of them will be closer to 170 degrees Celsius, 176 and so on. So even here, things are too hot. So the sun, even from this distance, is creating a lot of, a lot of, a lot of heat on the surface of these objects. So once again, looks like um, Uranus is also out. Neptune, you're the last planet we have. And Neptune actually has a very interesting moon, and that moon is called Triton. We think that this used to be a dwarf planet that was captured by Neptune because it's very, very large. And you see that the temperature here is actually minus 57 degrees Celsius. Now, Triton doesn't have any atmosphere, but let's say that for some unknown reason, we were able to release one atmosphere of pressure similar to Earth. So now, let's see how warm this, planet, uh, this moon gets. And right away, you can see that it starts outgassing, it starts losing the atmosphere, and the temperature skyrockets because the greenhouse effect here starts adding up and creates the average temperature of about 70 to 80 degrees Celsius, a little bit too warm. But so far, this is probably the best candidate for us to settle on. Uh, maybe some other moons of Neptune might be pretty comfortable too, but the average temperature in this system would be about 60 to 80 degrees Celsius. Still relatively hot. And so it looks like we actually have to look at the area of the habitable zone. So because our sun has expanded so much, the actual habitable zone here is basically expanding even past Neptune. Objects like Sedna are in the habitable zone now. Objects like Makimaki and Haumea are in the habitable zone. But even Pluto is inside the warmer area, warmer region of the habitable zone. So here, even on Pluto, if I were to add atmospheric pressure of about one atmosphere, even here, it's probably very likely that the temperature would be a little bit too hot for us to survive. So it looks like, so yeah, the temperature is 63 degrees. I mean, it would survive, but it would just be so hot all the time. You would need to have a lot of ways of cooling down pretty much constantly. And so it seems that it's really the outer dwarf planets, like for example, uh, Haumea, Sedna, and even objects like Orcus, which seem to have very comfortable temperature of 21 degrees Celsius, will become more likely places for humanity to actually live on, survive, and have comfortable conditions to call home. Now, obviously, there's no atmosphere here, and a lot of these objects have a lot of water, so they'll probably turn into liquid worlds filled with basically a lot of liquid, liquid oceans on them. But that's kind of what we want anyway. We would love to have a lot of liquid water, right? Well, anyways, so that's kind of what I wanted to show you in this video, I wanted to demonstrate that in time, in 5 billion years from now, 
it's probably these objects that will become habitable to us. It's the objects on the outskirts of the solar system. And so even today, when we're looking at all of these stars that are actually red giants right now, like for example, the infamous Betelgeuse, it's probably um, more likely that we're going to find something habitable far, far away from those objects in what would be equivalent of the Kuiper's belt, not near those stars. And on the other hand, it's these objects here that will become habitable later on in our own future, in the future of our solar system. Well, anyway, that's all I wanted to show you in this video, and I just wanted to demonstrate what will happen to our solar system in the future in about 4.5 billion years from now. And it will stay this way for about a billion years as well. Let's take a look at our beautiful planet Earth, completely burnt to a crisp by the super powerful, super big sun of 5 billion years from now. Anyway, thank you for watching, guys. I'll see you tomorrow. Come back tomorrow to learn something else. Space out. And as always, bye-bye.